Martinez, to ask a question to Coach Martinez, please hit the raise your hand function and please state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Eric Kane and then we'll go to David Pascal. Eric Kane, the sports animal here in Knoxville. Uh, coach, you, um, I believe you had the opportunity to coach Tim Banks at Central Michigan. How was that experience and how unique is it to work with him again here at Tennessee? Um, obviously, Tim was a, uh, he was a senior when I uh, came to, went, went to Central Michigan. It was only the one year that I was there in 1994. So I was blessed uh, in, in a sense where I got a chance to really coach a kind of a veteran group. And Tim was one of the captains, so to speak, one of the leaders on the, on the, on the defense not, and on the team. But uh, he was a fierce competitor, smart, tough. Uh, obviously, had a tremendous amount of uh, playmaking ability. Um, and, and it's the same year, too, that we won the, uh, the MAC championship. And uh, it was a special time. Uh, I had just uh, left uh, Grand Valley State. Um, uh, with uh, obviously somebody you guys know very well, Brian Kelly, and then my opportunity to get back in the, the <clears throat> Division One um, and to win a championship right off the bat, and uh, first time there being there, tradition there at the school, and uh, and to be a part of a you know a team that um, again had really good senior leadership led by Tim Banks, and, and uh, Tim was a a great player, like I said, and uh, uh, and to be around him now, obviously we've been friends for. For a long time, and the great thing about the business, the, the the job that we have is exactly what we say in recruiting. You know, making an impact in their lives and helping them uh, develop to be the men they want to be and reach their goals and dreams and aspirations. And to to sit there and, and now be beside him and uh, him leading the defense uh, is obviously uh, it's special for me because that's the, that's one of uh, one of the players I had the uh, <clears throat> obviously the blessing of, of being able to coach. So it's kind of a cool deal. Willie, hey, David Pascal here in Chattanooga. Hope you've been doing well. Uh, wanted to ask, you walked into the SEC 20 years ago, and I'm just curious, what, what has evolved and changed the most for you coaching defensive backs? What's different about it now compared to when you were 20 years ago? Um, uh, it's going to be a very popular answer. Um, the offenses uh, were, you know, you – the, the speed of the game has changed. You know, the tempo of the game has changed. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, obviously, in this league, um, there's a tremendous amount of, you know, great athletic players at each position, probably the best in the country. And so the, the talent is, is obviously a, a, it's great, but it's the speed. It's the tempo of the offenses, you know, being able to try and defend the entire field, sideline to sideline. Um, you know, you got to play with the same personnel on the field. Um, used to be able to change that personnel grouping because you had time. Um, the strategies have changed. Obviously, the rules have changed. Um, but uh, I would say the offenses. David Ubbin and Brent Hubs. Uh, Will, what do, you, what do you make of uh, the defensive backs that, that you're inheriting? Well, I'm actually pretty been ex I've been excited. I mean, I, there's some guys in the room that uh, uh, obviously I was a part of recruiting. Um, that's kind of neat to see and 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 watch uh, them through the years here and develop to be the people they they become the players they are. Um, but uh, I think it's a locked in group. Uh, uh, I think it's somebody uh, a group that really really wants to get better each and every day. I mean, it's really been an awesome uh, experience for me and, and uh, Coach Banks. Obviously. Uh, in the back end. So uh, got some in leadership uh, guys that uh, know how to lead guys that have the respect of their teammates. Um, and you got, you kind of need that in the back end, especially at the last line of defense. And also this offense, what does it do to secondaries that allows it to have so much success throwing the ball down the field? Um, I'm going to take a positive to that answer to that question. Okay. And a lot of guys will, and, and that's really uh myself evolving as a coach, especially in the secondary. Um, the tempo of the offense is now, and the great thing about it is we get, we get a chance to practice it. Um, I've, I've been a part of it now for uh, a couple of years when I was at Oklahoma, and then obviously uh, defending it, but also on a daily basis, though, this will be the sixth year in an offense that uh, goes basically at warp speed. So you kind of like have to be ready to go. You just can't you're not just going to line up and, and, and practice and, and, and kind of ease your way through. Not that anybody does that, but I mean, it starts right from the beginning. The tempo is fast. It's fast in 
uh, thinking, uh, obviously along with the running part of it, but to process stuff very quickly. So to practice that every day, uh, every each period, uh, it's only going to be a positive for 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 the defense. Um, it's almost like you get, you'll get to the game, and I know being a part of it is that sometimes you get these offenses that are no huddle, and they don't quite go as fast as our offense is going to be going, and so that kind of like slows the game down a little bit for them. So still be in some games where, come on man, hurry up, and snap the ball, which gives them the time that they've been able to, to, to practice that process each and every day, then when it comes to game times, it's a little bit slower for them. They can process a little bit quicker. And so that's the positive of being involved um, in defending this each and every day and the mindset and kind of knowing the ins and outs and how you do you go about doing that. Uh, um, so, you know, you focus on the things that you have to do to be successful as a defensive back. What is that? Well, once that plays over with, get yourself lined up, get yourself in a play routine, like we like to say, um, identify the down and distance, identify the personnel call, identify the call that's being given to you, and then get your eyes in the right spot to just define what they lined up in and where are the go-to guys, you know, and that you got to do that all in about six to seven seconds. And to be able to practice that every day, you know, it, it'll be where they're going to be ready for it. It's not going to be something that's going to really bother them. So um, you got to pay attention to details. Um, that's that's going to be important. You have to embrace the process. You know, don't look at it like a grind every day. Anything that you do, how you do anything is how you do everything. That's kind of like what we say. And if you are prepared and you're and you're and you're detailed in academics, um, in whoever you're meeting with, whether it's a strength coach. Um, you know, being early, be, being on time, have a plan already processed through uh, uh, prior to coming into that room or into that meeting. And it's only going to help you ha help you have success on the field. Coach Martinez, Brent Hubs with VolQuest.com. Welcome back to, to Knoxville. Two, two things. One, you're the one who's been here most recently. How much does that help in terms of talking to the defensive staff about kind of the, the Tennessee experience and, and recruiting to Tennessee and, and expectations at Tennessee and all of that. And then two, kind of follow up to what you just talked about. How do you avoid not being too simplistic in the back end when you're having to go warp speed that you can still be complex enough to, to, to affect an offense, but you're playing at such a fast pace? How, how do you balance that? Uh, to the first question, you know, I, I, I told the guys, you know, and obviously they'll ask me the questions, you know, what about Tennessee? And this, this is a tremendous place. It's a special place. I mean, the first day that I came here uh, back in 2013 um, is the same excitement that I had when I came back. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a place that has so much tradition, uh, so much success, pa a passionate fan base that wants nothing but success. Um, they follow you. They're passionate. They, it's important to them. I mean, it's like, uh, and, and, and when, we're, when, when I was recruiting here, the last time I was here, and even when I'm uh, with another school, um, you know, you walk around and you wear that power tee. You walk in, it doesn't matter what state in this country, and, and let alone across, you know, sometimes you got to go out of the, uh, out of the states. Uh, you know exactly what school it is. You know, that it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable tradition. And so it's, it's, it's never been a recruit that I've, you know, that I've been a part of when we brought them here uh, from wherever they came from that they didn't really enjoy themselves in Rocky Top. You know, so that's, uh, that's what I remember and that's kind of like how I feel now. And there's so many great players that have played here uh, and it's not just football, man. We're talking about all sports. And so there's so much to pull from to sit there and say, well, look, look, this, this one here went here and she went here and look at the success they had. And, and uh, there's tremendous tradition here. To your second question, uh, I, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Brent? What, what was it? Yeah, just how do you balance? Being about simple, being 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 simple. Yeah, simple because you have to go fast versus being complex. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny you say that, but from a fundamental standpoint, from a thought process, like I had said a little bit earlier about just embrace the process. Well, it starts with the beginning, you know what I mean, of a play. You know what I mean? Don't, don't look at anything else other than you can handle looking over to the sideline and get a, get a down distance situation then you can actually look at our personnel calls or what they have in the game that's something that doesn't need anything but just looking now once you do that being able to process 
what they have shown formation wise. Okay. You've practiced it. You're going against an offense that's going really fast. It's a positive. Sometimes it looks like it's unreal, but guys, listen to me, trust us that in the process, if you embrace it, okay, it may look a little bit, you know, uh, not realistic how fast they're going in practice because sometimes it is goes faster than normal. But if you're able to process it and focus on your job, okay, you do simple better from your standpoint. What's your job? What is your job? Define it, you know, and then what is the, what's the call that we give you? You know what I mean? Within that, you got to have some kind of an idea as, as we put in the defensive calls, you got to know the weaknesses and strengths of that defense comparable to what they might do. Okay. So, they're going to do exactly what you show them what we're going to do, but then we'll have the ability to change that. Okay. You have to be able to do that. Okay. But it won't be something that's something that we haven't practiced. You know what I mean? That's what the offenses do. They look over the sideline and see, you know, look for a different check, how the defense looks. You got to be able to do that same thing on defense. And so it becomes a chess match. So I don't think it's so is that we're going to be simple. That's not going to be the case. We're going to have a strategy, a scheme, that will counter anything that the offense is doing, okay? What we got to do is just play relentless, be locked in and focused and play relentless because that's still going to be, it's not going to be so much the scheme as it's going to be how we play, okay? It's going to be how the tempo that we play, you know, almost kind of like reverse the, the, the mindset. We're going to set the tempo. I know that they have the snap count and all that stuff, but by the way and the style that we can play, where we're relentless, okay? Uh, there's no perfect call. It's really the ability to how you play as a unit, all 11 guys being on the same page. Okay. Understanding our, who is, you know, what is our weakest link in that 11 guys, there's going to be weaknesses and how to play off of that and counter that knowing that the offense knows that. And then that comes where coaching comes in where you kind of give enough change-ups that plays to your strengths. And again, it's just a chess match. And most of the time, that, that you, fa you face these fast tempo offenses or how you have to defend all these offenses across America. A lot of it's because guys aren't locked in, okay? Play after play after play. You know what I mean? They get out of their mindset of really what's important, and that's to play as a unit, play as one, okay? If you're going to play, if you're going to make a mistake, you're going to do it 100%. You're going to go fast, relentless, physical, okay? And if something does happen wrong, it's going to happen. Get back up, get back to your spot, Wherever that is, whether you're a right left corner, um, you know, a right left defensive end, uh, and then get the call and get ready and strap it up and let's, let's snap it up and we'll play the next play. It's the next play. Once that one's done, get on to the next play. It's a mindset. We'll close with Patrick Brown. Hey, Willie, Patrick Brown with 24 7 Sports. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a two part question. First of all, um, what was the process like to you getting coming back here when, when Coach Heupel took the Tennessee job? Did you think there was a chance you might uh, come back to Knoxville? And, and secondly, uh, you mentioned seeing some guys here that you recruited. Who were some of those guys? And maybe what was that interaction like when you saw them for the first time uh, in a couple of years? You know, I mean, uh, obviously, the, when, when Coach Hype took the job, I mean, we really didn't know really what was going to happen. You know, obviously, it was a process to it. And uh, uh, obviously, I was at a great place. Um, you know, where we won a lot of games and got, got a tradition of their own going right now. Um, obviously, I'm from Florida, um, you know, so I had the, two, the, the best of two worlds there. You know what I mean? I had an opportunity to come back to a special place like Tennessee and work for Coach Heupel, who I think is a great leader. Um, and, and then I got a chance to maybe possibly stay. You know, I didn't really know, um, but I'm, obviously I'm excited to be here. Um, looking forward to my round two, so to speak, here at Rocky Top. So I'm fired up about that. And, uh, uh, and then, you know, coming back to, um, you know, you, you, a couple guys that, that uh, I was a part of recruiting, Theo Jackson uh, is somebody, obviously, that, uh, um, you know, was somebody that I wanted when I was here. We wanted, basically, and, and uh, thought he was the right mindset. We thought he was the right athlete. Um, and that's kind of like holds true to form right now. And, and just watching the video that I've watched on him and, the person that he's become. Um, and uh, Alante Taylor is another one that actually committed to us at a young age that uh, I had recruited. Um, I mean, as a, as a young man, I mean, we're talking about ninth, 10th grade year. And, uh, and to see how he's become and the leader that he's become is really exciting. That's what, that's why, you know, for me, that's why I got into coaching. You know, uh, it was first, I've, I've had a lot of great mentors, a lot of coaches that, uh, 
throughout my life, especially at a young age, you know, but they, they, they kind of have the same common theme, you know what I mean? Uh, to get into coaching, you know, it's really to have an impact in people's lives, to be able to share what you know and what you've gone through and then pay it forward, so to speak. And to see it, you know, to see Alante, you know, and to see Theo, that's what, that's what's so great about what I do, you know, to be a part of that, you know, in the coaching profession is to see their development and to see the families that they come from and, and how proud they must be of them. And that's not to take away from anybody else that I haven't recruited there. Um, you know, I know there's some, there's some there like Cheyenne, you know, Cheyenne has not had the career obviously for the injuries, but he's still a super, super young man. I mean, he's, uh, uh, you know, obviously we want nothing but the best for him moving forward. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and there's a other couple of guys there, like, uh, you know, I told, uh, I told uh, Danico, you know, Slaughter, you know, I tried to get him at the old school that I just came from and you kind of dodged me and all of a sudden the last second Rocky Top gets him, you know what I mean? I says, it's funny how things kind of come around. It's just like, you know, when I wanted uh, Brian Randolph at another school that I was at and all of a sudden I come back and I get a chance to coach him. Somehow it just seems like, you know what I mean? If you, if you try and do the best you can and do it the right way and you recruit the right people, um, you know, it's, it's the right fit. It's somehow you come back, get a chance to coach, um, those, those, uh, type of, you know, student athletes that, um, I once wanted to recruit, you know, and wanted for myself. So it's kind of cool to see them develop and to become the people they are right now. Thank you, coach.